Hello everyone, today I got a good one for you guys. I'm gonna be talking about the VA loan, who can use it, what it's all about, and what exactly makes the VA loan so special. The VA loan is available to service members, veterans, and surviving spouses. The VA loan is provided by private lenders, such as banks and other mortgage companies. The terms that come with the VA are so good because the VA is back in your loan. So what they're telling the lenders is, hey, look, this person was a service member, a veteran, or a spouse of a service member that's now deceased. So if you give them this loan, if they happen to default on the loan, we will back them up by paying you this much. And the VA loan isn't just for home purchases. It can help with repairs. It can help with building a home from the ground up. So when it comes to the VA loan, there are five main things that you need to know. The first, which is very popular and most people know about, is that there is zero down payment required. That means you can literally purchase a property with no money out of your pocket. Being that the loan is backed by the VA, you also get very competitive interest rates. There's also a very limited amount you pay in closing costs. You don't need PMI, which is private mortgage insurance, which is typically what you would need for any home that you purchase that you don't put. 20% down on. I think the best part of the VA loan is that it's a lifetime benefit, so you can use your VA loan benefits multiple times. So there's no special place you go to in order to get access to the VA loan. Most banks typically offer the VA loan option, and if you're a service member, one of the first questions you're gonna be asked when you do put in for an application for a mortgage is if you are a service member and if you're electing to use your VA loan. So before you decide to choose a specific bank, just make sure that they do in fact finance the VA loan. Something to note is that when you do use a VA loan, there does come a funding fee for using the VA loan, which can be waived or the seller can pay for it. There are a lot of other different ways that the funding fee can be waived. A lot to go through here, but you can easily Google it and figure out if you qualify for any of them. One of the craziest things that's happened too is there is no limit to how much the VA will back a loan for. So check this out. If you're a first time home buyer, you can use the VA loan and buy a home for any price and the VA will back it. Or if you already use the VA loan once, but you've sold that property and you've paid off that mortgage already, you gain your full entitlement back. So now you can purchase a home for any price you want and the VA will back it up. Now, this is naturally gonna raise the question, now, what if I already have a home that I use the VA loan to purchase, but I wanna get a second home? Well, you can make a second purchase reusing your VA loan entitlement. However, now you're limited to how much is left on your actual entitlement. Whatever county you're in, there's a certain bracket of how much money you are entitled to, and that will then come into effect. Now, this new home has to become your primary residence. So let's say hypothetically you PCS to another duty station and wanted to purchase a new home, but yet you wanted to maintain your current home. You could do that, but you must be able to afford the loan payments on both. So if you exceed the loan limit that you are given on that new purchase, this might mean that you might need to put down a down payment for that excess amount of money that you went over. Or you could just sell your old home and then reinstate your full entitlement and have no limit on what your next purchase is. So there are some key things that you're gonna need to learn or know about prior to actually initiating the VA loan process and going about purchasing your first home. This doesn't really take a lot of work out of you, but you're gonna need to provide some documents. So the first thing that the bank is gonna try to do is they're gonna wanna verify your VA loan home eligibility. You're also gonna wanna educate yourself on the home buying process. You want to understand the VA home loan certificate of eligibility and the VA appraisal process. It also doesn't hurt to understand all the other type of VA loan options that you have because there's a lot more you can do with the VA loan than just purchase a home. So there are a few requirements that come along with using the VA loan. The first is you have to live in the home as your primary residence. You also need to be an active duty service member that has served at least 90 consecutive days. This also includes individuals that are in the active guard reserve or AGR. For those that identify as veterans, there are a few qualifications that you might meet. The first, you must have served for 24 consecutive months. If you don't meet this requirement, then you must have served for at least 90 days 
and been activated to active duty at some point during those 90 days. And if you were discharged from the military because of some sort of disability and it was less than 90 days, then you also qualify to use the VA loan benefit. And no, before someone access, no, active duty during basic training and AIT does not count. So if you're perhaps in the National Guard, you need 90 days of active duty service that is non-training related. So there are five steps that you should take before you begin this process of buying a home using your VA loan. First is apply for the VA loan certificate of eligibility. Next, you wanna look at your current finances to see what kind of homes you can afford in what market. This includes looking at your current income, looking at your current expenses, and seeing how you can replace your rent with a mortgage in order to make it make the most sense for you and your family. Next, you wanna choose a lender. What I like to do is I typically get at least three pre-approvals and compare rates. Different banks, maybe mortgage companies, will have different interest rates that they offer you so you can have them compete against each other or they might have different closing calls. So you might wanna see which bank or mortgage company fits your needs the best. You then wanna pick a real estate agent to represent you. Now remember, the real estate agent is representing you and they're applying for this job to work for you. So you wanna make sure you pick someone who's competent, understands the market, and understands your needs, and is a good match for you. And then you get to the fun part, which is actually shopping for homes. So you wanna check homes that match your criteria, and also homes that fit within your price range. Now, VA loans can go from as long as 30 years to as short as a 15-year loan. You can get what's known as a fixed rate mortgage or an adjustable rate mortgage. Now listen up, never go for the adjustable rate mortgage. Never go for the adjustable rate mortgage. The fixed rate is the most common form for the VA loan. And this just means that your principal and your interest stays the same throughout the lifetime of that mortgage. However, some things might change such as your homeowner insurance, or maybe the taxes that you pay. The adjustable rate mortgage is where your interest rate could fluctuate from different periods of times. So depending on their metrics, at some points you might be paying way more for your mortgage, maybe way higher than you can actually afford. That is why it's very dangerous and you should avoid it at all costs. So there are some fees that you should expect to pay when you decide to utilize the VA loan. The first is the VA funding fee, which is to help back up your loan. And as I stated earlier, depending on who you are, you might be exempt. So you should look into it and figure it out. You can also expect to do an appraisal, which you cannot waive with the VA. So what the appraisal does is it ensures that the home you're buying is actually worth what you're paying for it. And as the lender who's backed by the VA, the VA wants to ensure that you're actually buying something for its fair value. The appraisal also helps the VA determine if the house meets its standards. For instance, maybe all stairs need railings or is the house inhabitable. You can also expect to pay closing costs when you finally decide to close on the home. This will include taxes, the origination fee, and other fees that are associated with the production of different materials and services throughout the whole process that it took to produce your actual loan. Now this is optional, but you can also choose to put down a down payment when you utilize the VA loan. Now, as I said earlier, the VA loan is a 0% down payment loan. However, if you were to look into minimize your monthly payments on your mortgage, you could choose to put down a certain percentage of the loan down in order to make your monthly payments smaller. Now, you already get pretty competitive rates with the VA loan, but you can choose to opt into paying for discount points, which would make your interest rate even more competitive. You can also expect to make an earnest money deposit. And this is money that you pay and it's held by a third party. This is to ensure both parties, both you as the buyer and the seller, that you are per serious about this negotiation and making this purchase. You can also expect to spend money on, on a home inspection where you have an expert come in and look at the home, check out the structure, the roof, things of that nature, all major components that may be costly. And this will be a safety net to make sure that you can identify any problems in the home and possibly use it as leverage to negotiate with the seller in order to get a lower price. 
You can also expect maybe perhaps lenders and owners title insurance, which is either to protect whoever is lending money to you or to protect yourself as the owner. Now I know this sounded like a lot, but these are not all mandatory. The majority of them are actually optional. But in my opinion, these are some of the ones that you should absolutely not go without. So the appraisal, as I mentioned earlier, is mandatory. So there's no way around that. That's usually going to be done by your mortgage lender already. And they're going to charge you for it. The closing costs come with producing the loan. So there's no way of getting around that either. However, if you do not have the cash on hand, you may be able to roll over the co closing costs into the overall loan. But I don't really suggest doing this. I'd rather you just save up the money on hand since you're not paying anything down for the mortgage anyways. So you can just knock that out and not worry about it later. Now, this last one that I recommend, which is also very highly recommended by the VA, is to pay for a home inspection. This is your security and this is to make sure that this home that you're purchasing, which is probably going to be one of the biggest purchases of your life, is a safe one. And you want to make sure you have no regrets when you actually purchase this home just to find out maybe a month after closing that the furnace is bad or the roof needs to be replaced. You want to make sure you get not be cheap and actually get this inspection done by a licensed professional. So after you've done all this wonderful stuff and you finally close on your home, these are what your monthly expenses that are going to be reoccurring from month to month are going to look like. First, you're going to have your mortgage, you're going to have your taxes, you're going to have your homeowner's insurance, and then depending on where your home is located, you might have some kind of homeowner's association or some kind of condominium association fee. Now, this is just a general oversight of the VA loan as a whole. There's a lot more little specific details in there that you could educate yourself on by going on the VA site. But this right now will allow you to be able to take the first step if you're looking to actually utilize the VA loan and purchase your first ever home. But I'm always down to answer more questions on the topic. Just feel free to leave a comment below or send me a personal message on my Instagram at Wolf of Watertown. I hope this video was very helpful and you got something out of it, but see you next time.